Hi there, Karen from ediblewildfood.com here. And before I start, I want to thank each and every one of you who are subscribers. I am very grateful to you all. And if you're new, please consider subscribing and be sure to hit the bell so you get notification of future videos. And if you like this video or any other of my videos, please be sure to share it in your social media. Thank you. Now, let's get to the forest. Alrighty, now let's talk about these wonderful artist conch. Ganoderma aplanatum is the Latin name for this incredible conch. This is one of the most adaptive fungi in terms of the variety of tree species that it can grow on. It primarily enjoys hardwood as its substrate. However, on very rare occasions, it has been known to grow on conifers. Artis conch is parasitic in certain hardwood trees. And when this parasitic form, or rather the fungus, it can cause a white rot. And what happens is that it's attacking both the lignin and cellulose of the tree. However, it's known more to be saprotic, meaning it grows in rich organic matter, that being the tree. And let me just move over here and it's free from oxygen as it's growing. Here we go. Now, as it breaks down the tree, what's happening is that it's taking in all the beneficial compounds of the tree. And some of those compounds include polysaccharides, polyphenols, and triterpenes. And it accumulates. There's some just beginning. By It, it accumulates within this uh, conch and it creates conchs that are full of mycological goodness. Alrighty. So they grow alone or check that out or they grow in groups on decaying logs and stumps. And they grow from the wounds of injured living trees as well. But this is obviously a tree that's been down for a while. It has a brownish appearance on the top, like that. But the underside is white. And if you were to touch it, it's rather rubbery. Now, there's a brief overlap between the period of active growth and the fertile period where spores are produced. Since the growth of the species is so variable, the point where it is at that stage can be anywhere from mid-June to late August, meaning that is when it's at its best for gathering if you're using it for medicinal purposes. These can grow for years, and some samples can actually get to be as large as 75 centimeters across. That's 30 inches, but that's rare. Now, artist conch gets its name from the natural canvas that is underneath the fruiting body, which, let's go back here for a sec, because I can get underneath as, there we go. So this part of it has been used as canvas for many people who are, are artists or want to be artists. And some of the creations that they've created are just amazing. But if you want to do it, you have to make sure that you never touch the under part with your thumb or fingers or with anything for that matter. Because as soon as you touch it, that means it's going to bruise and that will ruin your canvas. So if you're taking this to use for artistic purposes, you have to carry it in such a way that you're not touching it. Makes it a bit challenging depending on how deep into the woods you are. Now, you can also take these home and you don't have to carve them right away. You can let them dry, use them to paint on. The imagination 
can take you to many places in terms of using these for artistic purposes. However, let's talk more about the goodness of Ganoderma. Okay, I've just made my way around this log because there are lots of samples to be had on both sides. There we go. So I mentioned Artis conch belongs in the genus of Ganoderma. And also in this family are the famous Rishi and the red belted polypores. So, like all polypores, Artis conch contains a range of beneficial compounds. One such group of compounds that might sound familiar are beta-glucans. Beta-glucan polysaccharides are powerful immunomodulators working in a number of ways to help improve immune function. And another group of compounds that are present in Ganoderma aplamatum are triterpene or triterpene tri triterpenes. Sorry about that. Triterpenes have been known to improve digestive and hepatic function. Look at that one. That's kind of funky the way this one is informing kind of flat. That would suggest that at some point somebody has cut that. That wasn't me. <laughs> All right. Now, the triterpenes have been known to, as I mentioned, improve digestive system as well as hepatic function. And this is a myriad of other polysaccharides, sterols, and polyphenolic compounds that all contribute to its medicinal properties. This one here, by the way, is coming close to that 30 inches. Well, no, not quite, it's about halfway, but still, it's a good size. Okay. Artis conch has a laxative and diuretic effects. It's antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, amazing for the lungs and the respiratory system, and it actually has been proven to have some anti-tumor effects as well. Commonly though, this is used as a healthy tea because as food, it's really, really, really difficult to cut this down to a point where you can actually use it as a food source. Now, this can also be used for dyeing wool, as well as some fabrics, even paper. And it will yield a rust color with wool when ammonia is used as your mordant. In Asia, the, fruit, the fruiting bodies are blended or cold pressed with water to create Ganoderma beverages. Two things to remember about this amazing conch. Antioxidant and immune support. Very, very powerful. If you want to do an immune boosting tea, you can make it with the artist conch, birch polypores, and turkey tails. You can also make tincture. Now, I don't have any birch polypores on me, but I just so happen to have some turkey tails that I saw. So you make tea with these, cut down pieces of the artist conch, and birch polypore. And I'll put a link to each of those down below so you can find them in a forest near you. And they're so easy to identify. Anyways, <laughs> making a tincture is so easy and it's one of the best ways to use this incredible conch to keep your immune system running at 100%. Now, how to do that? I'm gonna take you back to my place and show you just how simple it is.
All right, so I'm back at the house. And before I talk about tinctures, I want to talk about using artist conch or turkey tails for that matter, or birch polypores. These, these have been dehydrated. To use these as food, it's almost virtually impossible to break this down and put it into a powder form to use it uh, in baked goods or in stews, casseroles or whatever. So what I do highly recommend is that you break it down to its smallest pieces like I've done here and you can make a very, very nutritious, powerful antioxidant cup of tea. I mentioned earlier when I was in the forest about the tri mushroom and these are the three mushrooms the polypores birch polypores turkey tails and the artist conch and there they are infusing so shortly I will be having a very powerful antioxidant cup of tea that is amazing for my immune system okay now in addition to tea, of course, there is making tinctures. All you need to do is get a really good quality vodka, and I use 40%. You put your artist comb into a glass jar, and preferably with a glass lid. Now, mind you, this is a very ancient uh, mason jar. And I don't have to worry about the quality of the of the rim because it's not going to come into contact with the actual tincture. But this glass top is perfect. If you're using more contemporary modern <laughs> uh, mason jars, you can always put a piece of parchment paper to, to separate it. And basically all you're going to do is however much tincture you want to have, you put it into your jar and add your vodka and you'll see I'll probably I'll get a stick in a little bit just to make sure that there are no more air bubbles so there's just a tiny tiny little bit of vodka there in which there are no uh, pieces of artist conch and you don't have to worry about these floating right now because as they become filled with moisture of the vodka, they will stay below the surface. So every two days or so, you just give it a good shake. Make sure you label it as well. And I like to let it infuse for a good five, six or seven weeks in order to get all the constituents out. And once you have that tincture, all you need are a few drops a day and you can add that into water and that will help boost your immune system and add to your antioxidant bank that you have in your body. We need all the antioxidants we need to, to get through anything and everything that uh, life seems to throw at us. So, artist conch and friends in a cup of tea. Artist conch tincture will be coming up in just over a month. You can also do tincture of turkey tails. That's a very popular tincture. You could even add some turkey tails into yours as well. But I like to keep mine separate and just a personal reason. And there you are. It's so simple to make tinctures and teas with our favorite mushrooms. So, if you're not sure or you can't remember how to make a tincture, please go to my website. I'll actually put the link below. I have PDF files that you can download that will help you um, not only learn how to make a tincture, but how to make salves and lots of other stuff. So I'll put that link below. And I thank you all for watching. And again, when you're, this just can't be used as food unless you make tea with the fungi 
then you can use that tea to make your rice, your quinoa, um, you could use it in your soup broth, you can put it into anything in order to get all the antioxidants in your system. And there you go. Please subscribe to ediblewildfood.com here at YouTube and be sure to hit the bell for future notifications and be sure to check out my website. And if you're on Facebook, I am ediblewildfood.com on Facebook. Thank you everybody.